Welcome to lesson four. In this lesson, we're talking about meal planning, which is going to be your biggest factor when it comes to saving time in the kitchen. There are two ways to plan meals. If you have a very consistent schedule, then you can do planning by week or even by month. There are some great apps on the market that allow you to pull different recipes every single day of the week and it even generates a grocery list for you. But if your schedule is like mine, you can only plan one to three days in advance. Therefore, I take a more passive approach to meal planning, but I make sure to have enough ingredients on hand for the week. Before I go to the grocery store, I take a quick inventory of the pantry items we discussed in the previous lesson and then I stock up on fresh fruits, vegetables, meats, and dairy. The most important part about meal planning on the fly is to make sure that none of your produce or meat spoil before you use them. This is the biggest problem that a lot of people have when they don't sit down and create a meal plan for the entire week. Therefore, it's very important that you keep a rolling inventory of your ingredients in your refrigerator for the week. Have a designated place for every ingredient and consistently place your ingredients where they belong. Designate a shelf for leftovers. Put all your fresh produce in one drawer and your dairy in another. When I come back from the grocery store, I put half the meats in the refrigerator and I freeze the other half so I know they won't spoil. The meats I like to freeze are those cut in smaller quantities so they defrost quicker. The whole chickens and whole roasts I'll cook that night. Towards the middle of the week, I'll run out of my fresh meats and it's time to defrost the ones in the freezer. I always make sure to have a meat defrosting in the refrigerator at least the night before so that I don't waste time letting it defrost in the microwave or in a bowl of cold water while I'm trying to cook dinner. Even though dinner comes every single night, four o'clock would hit and I'd be like, I don't know what to do for dinner. Now I set a trigger. So when I'm sitting down for dinner one night, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna make the next night. And I like to get my family's input so I don't have to hear them complain about what I chose. Now let's talk about what to do when food is about to spoil. If I defrosted a meat and then something last minute came up and I have no use for it, I'll go ahead and cook it anyway and then store the cooked part in the refrigerator for short term or the freezer for long term storage. You can apply the same method to produce. So if your green beans are about to spoil, go ahead and cook them up and just save it in the refrigerator or freezer cooked. If your leftover meat is really dry, then you overcooked it the first time. We'll discuss proper meat temperatures in a future lesson. Towards the end of the week, I make what I call my catch-alls. These are soups, pizzas, and stir fries. Dishes where I can just throw the whole contents of the refrigerator into the dish and it'll turn out great. Catch-alls are a great way to upcycle your leftovers. Just by throwing that little bit of meat and produce into a big pot of soup, it becomes a whole new dish. To recap, there are three major components of meal planning. Make sure that your foods are defrosted by the time you need them. Keep proper inventory of your refrigerator so that foods don't spoil before you cook them. And the third is to make sure you upcycle your leftovers so the foods don't spoil after you cook them. Your homework today is to organize your refrigerator and your freezer, and if you feel ambitious, your pantry, and to plan two meals for the next two days.